Namaste and welcome to yet another edition of The Right Perspective. And this one is a very special one, ladies and gentlemen, because we're going to go deep dive into the annals of history. Look at a personality who is only now recently being celebrated and that too perhaps over the last eight years because the NDA under Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the BJP, the leadership, they have decided that no, we have to celebrate this man, Sardar Vallabhai Patel. He was hailed as the Iron Man of India, but how many of us actually knew his contribution for Bharat? How many of us actually credit him in our hearts, day in and day out, for giving us the Bharat that we know, this generation knows? And how many of us have often turned around and asked, why was this man not the Prime Minister of our country? Was he ever the favoured choice? Was there ever a line which was stated by the Mahatma who said that whoever is the unanimous choice of the Indian National Congress as a political outfit, as the president, whoever is chosen by all the constituents as the president of the party, will become the prime minister of this country. Was there ever a statement like this made? Who was the unanimous choice? Who was the person in that room who saw the chit and then said, I withdraw my nomination because although he was the unanimous choice, he was not the personal favorite. There are lots of stories. But the question that we ask and the perspective that we want to look at is had Sardar Patel been the Prime Minister, would we see a different Bharat, Major General Jiri Bakshi? Would we see a different Bharat, Uday Mahalkar Ji? Would we be living in a different Bharat today, Abhijit Majumdar? Agle 25 minute aapke hain. So we'll start with General Bakshi. First up, lovely. Thank you for joining us here on The Right Perspective. You're always there in my heart, but... But to say, very good to see you physically Thank in presence you. here in the studio. Thank you. Uh, you know, there is a dire need today to take an objective look at the history of our freedom struggle. Hmm. You know, in 2007, the, the transfer of power archives were declassified in London. Hmm. Now, Bipin Chandra Pal and all these historians, you know, court historians as I call them, which they which uh, preservative they deserve, hmm. right? They have compiled that history without going into the official classified documents that had been released about the freedom struggle. And they tell you an entirely different story. Hmm. And it's about time we come to terms with the truth. 75 years after independence is one hell of a long time. Hmm. And we still haven't come to terms with the truth. The truth is that the only people that the British actually feared was Netaji, Subhash Chandra Bose and the INA. 2.5 million Indian soldiers were being demobilized after the war and it, they were totally infected. They were hmm. totally, you know, uh, mesmerized by the personality of Bose, by the sacrifices of the INA. Ni November, December 1945, the trials had taken place. Dhillan, Sehgal, Shah Nawaz. Hmm. Lal Kile Se Ai Awaz and there were riots all over the country. Police opened fire, they won't stop. You know, I have had a look at hmm. the transfer of power archives. We had sent Dr. Kalyan Day to London. He spent six months on the transfer of power archives, photocopied them, brought them here. We all sat in a team in the Netaji, this thing, and we studied them. And you know, what we were astounded to find was that February 1946, there was the revolt in the Royal Indian Navy, hmm. right? And uh, just prior to that, you know, Field Marshal uh, uh, Okinle hmm. was then the Commander-in-Chief of India. Wavell was the Viceroy. He wrote to him and he said, and this was in December 45. he said, any time now we can expect a minor revolt to break out. The major revolt we are expecting is <coughs> 45. We've got 40,000 Goras mm. and we've got and we've got 2.5, 25 lakh Indian soldiers who fought the Germans, who beat the Japs, who beat the Italians and they are angry. Mm. Right? It would be in our interest to get the hell out, you know, with our honor and integrity intact mm. while there is still time. You know, hmm. and they had drawn up plans. They had right. drawn up plans for a Kabul-like evacuation, flying out from Delhi, flying out from the major metropolises, from shipping out from the major ports. The British army, Goras would 
hold the outer cordon while the women and the children were flown out. Right. This is in writing. Hmm. This is in writing. Hmm. Right. And that is the time when Nehru had become the darling of the British establishment because he had said, if Netaji comes with the Japanese army, I'll take a sword and I'll fight him personally. And thereafter, you know, after the Quit India movement, when Gandhi had disregarded hmm. the advice of the Congress Working Committee entire and said, we will go for this under persuasion of Bose, hmm. who was in contact with him, hmm. right? That is the time thereafter the British dispensed with them, hmm. right? Nehru's stock rose. They used the moral authority of Gandhi to have Nehru installed as their preferred Anglophile prime minister hmm. who would act as the rear guard of the empire. His first step was to anoint Mountbatten as the first governor general of India, whereas Pakistan had the decency to appoint Jinnah, a hmm. Pakistani, as the hmm. first So the Pakistanis general. stuck to their kilk, and their, but we were somewhere, like you said, an Anglophile. Uh, uh, now, in this case, where was Sardar Patel amongst all of it? And in the 40s, there was lots that was happening. So you are somebody who's a boss, uh, uh, and Mission Netaji, who you've looked at boss. You're somebody who studied Savarkar, and you've dove there. Somewhere... Sardar Patel is common to both. Absolutely. And, and he is somebody who's, who had the thumbs up from everyone. But he was not there in that seat where perhaps India wanted him. Your question, original question was that where India would have been had he been the Prime Minister. Yes. You see, this the phase which India is seeing today is a phase of national reawakening. Mm. 370, removal of 370... Yeah. is national reawakening, part of that process. Ram Mandir, part of that process. Correct? Mm. Now, when India became independent, the ground was ready for what has happened now, now. after 60 years. Because our great saints, Swami Vivekanand, Dhanan mm. uh, Saraswati, Maharishi Arvindo, mm. Swami Pramanandji of Bharat Seva Ashram Sangh, these saints had prepared the ground. But, Godse killed Gandhiji, unfortunately. Hmm. And those who were not rooted in our culture, and in them, amongst them were even pan-Islamist elements, were using them to, to, uh, to thrust their pan-Islamic agenda on the nation. So India would have been in a India would have been a superpower today. Had Sadar Patel been the Prime Minister, he foresaw the China problem mm. along with Savarkar. Correct? Mm. So Sardar, had Sardar Patel been the Prime Minister, India would have been a superpower today. Even economically. Mm. Let us look, look go uh, in uh, in another direction. You, know. you see, the India's caste system right. had its own perversions, no doubt. Correct. But it, has, it had got a lot of strength also. Hmm. You know, if there is a carpenter, his family into carpentry, he's into carpentry for the last 1,000 years. Iron Smith, he's into Iron Smith work for the last 1,000 years. So the outsourcing model, you know, hmm. uh, from which India is benefiting now, it could have benefited at that time also. Correct. But we created a model where it became fashionable to become a BA and BCom. Hmm. Where we should have Capitalize on our skilled uh, uh, talent. Hmm. While encouraging those who wanted to move out of skill to hmm. also yeah. become academic. Certainly. Yeah. Hmm. So, had, had we tied up with the Western countries at that time, we would have, we would have economic also we would have been very strong. And I think had Sardar Patel been there, he would have certainly taken this route. Hmm. The way he developed the cooperative movement, he knew the strength of this country. It hmm. shows very clearly. Yeah. So, I think Sardar Patel not becoming the Prime Minister is the greatest tragedy of independent India. Mm. And I think uh, father of the nation also has to take some part of this blame. Mm. Because, because uh, almost the entire party was in favour of Sardar Patel. Yeah, that chit had his name, didn't it? Yes. And, I mean, 
there is no answer to this blunder, you know, okay, how it happened. So India has been a loser hmm. in a very big way. It had to wait for 60 years. And even some of the problems which have, they have left behind, like the, the, like the problem of uh, Hindu-Muslim harmony. Hmm. The, the Wahhabi movement today, and in that the ultra-Wahhabi ultra movement has, has developed only because of Congress's policies in the first 60 years. Hmm. The, here does it come, Abhijit, if I were to say... And this would not have happened had, hmm. had Sardar Patel been the Prime Minister. So Hindu-Muslim problem which you see today at some level is also because of uh, Sardar Patel not becoming the Prime Minister. Not becoming the... There, there are many things. Somebody who could combine more than 700 riyasats to give India the shape to, uh, that is, should showed a certain will, certain understanding. But more importantly, was that the difference between our first Prime Minister and the person who could have been or should have been or would have been our first Prime Minister, that is Sardar. That one had an Anglophilic view, the other one would have had an India view. This is what we are trying to say to the world, Absolutely. that we are now trying to put forth a view that is Bharat. Exactly. See, Anand, uh, as Udaibha just uh, said, the mm. reawakening of India in a sense is happening now. Uh, it should have happened 70 years before that, right? Mm. If say, uh, uh, Netaji or uh, Patel, where, in, uh, where the Prime Minister then. And a leader would always be judged by the future generations, how, you know, uh, how, uh, you know what the, the legacy that they have left behind. If you look at some of the, four of the biggest problems that we have faced for 70, you know, we still face uh, uh, some of them. Kashmir, Pakistan, secularism, mm. etc. Uh, Patel was extremely clear in his views about secularism, his handling of the Razakars uh, mm. in uh, Hyderabad, his, his very, very tough handling of that, his, uh, you know, uh, making uh, the Maharaja sign the instrument of accession, uh, you know, otherwise it probably would have gone to uh, uh, Pakistan. Mm. So that is one. China. He told, I mean, this is Patel writing to Nehru in 1950. China doesn't see us as friends. friends. The Chinese government has tried to delude us hmm. by professions of peaceful intentions. This is, he's, you know, he's warning. And, you know, 12 years later, we had China right into our territory. And, you know, just we were at sixes and sevens. Yeah. We even gave China a permanent seat in the UN hmm. without taking anything from them. Correct. We uh, took Kashmir to uh, the UN, UN like, uh, you know, foolishly. Uh, economic policy, third one. You know, we, for, a, for the longest time, we followed the whole socialist model of uh, hmm. uh, economy. Whereas Patel, uh, he was against uh, controls. He was for investment. His economic outlook may not be exactly called free market. Dharmic capitalism. Huh? That's the term. Dharmic uh, capitalism. Why, 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 why I would say dharmic <laughs> capitalism is Sridhar Balasubram has written the book on cotillonomics. But yeah. the, the whole idea is that where you will have a code to practice creation of wealth. And there will be an ethics that the government or the country would be run, which is an ethics which was followed from the times of Ram, even into the times of the Maurya dynasty and what Kautilya had talked about. And that's why it, it stays with me. Exactly. That, and, and somewhere... Uh, Self-sufficiency. Self Self-sufficiency. Where, where you would say that the state will not, will govern, will not get into running of businesses, which is something which is being talked about now, where we'll say minimum government, maximum governance yeah. uh, as an aspect. You will not look at creating somebody, creating wealth with eyes saying, how can you become rich? Whereas you would say that you fall, you become rich, but you follow the code that you will ensure that every mouth is fed. And no one goes hungry. So, so, so that's, uh, that's where I was uh, coming through. But somewhere do you also believe that Bose would not have become ignominy? Uh, you know, uh, somewhere that the army which was diffused, a 2.5 million strong army, would have been there to protect Bharat. Contrary to a position taken, why do we need an army? We are a non-violent nation. Huh? Rather they say, no, we are going to secure our defences. Let's shut down ordnance factories. That would not have happened. We've got to build our own weapons so that we don't have to take Absolutely. it from somebody else. You think all of this would have changed? You know, you know the key, key characteristic when you look at Sardar Patel, realist with a capital 
are. Mm. Realism, right? The very first Iron Man, he gets all the princely states together, all the Rajas together, 560 plus of them, and reads out the riot act. Accede or else I am marching in the Indian army. Hmm. And they signed on the dotted line. The two holdouts were Hyderabad, which Patel was told to deal with. Patel marshaled the army, right? Gave them clear-cut orders to go in and five days the Nizam's joke was over. Hmm. The Police Nizam's action. and his, you know, Razakars and everybody were up with their hands up and uh, Urdus and the other, I mean, they had just surrendered five days. Uh, one of the first blitzkriegs launched by the Indian army, you know, which they would follow up in 71 hmm. in Bangladesh, 13 days, then five days in Hyderabad. It was all khalas, That's it was over. That is the realism of Patel. Now, I want to quote to you, you know, the 47, 48 Kashmir operations were talked of. Sam Manekshaw, hmm. the inimitable, irrepressible Sam, he had recounted this to Prem Shankar Jha. Sam was sent, he was hmm. in the military operation directorate, I had the privilege to serve there. He was sent to JNK to evaluate the situation hmm. and to give to the whole cabinet. Then, of course, uh, Mount Batten was hmm. in the chair. We had Nehru, we had Patel, we had uh, the defense minister and they were all there. And uh, he said, uh, Manik ji, you know, he, hmm. he, 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 he said, give us an update on the situation. So thereafter, Manik Shah reports, he gave an update that we'll have to fly in our troops immediately. Shirnagar is about to fall. Right? Now, uh, I'm just quoting to you, you know, Sam's own words. He says, you know, when he was asked, you know, uh, Mountbatten looked at Nehru. So he said, uh, uh, Nehru talked of UN, Russia, Africa, God Almighty, everything, until Sardar Patel lost his temper and snapped. Jawahar, do you want Kashmir or not? <laughs> he said, of course I want Kashmir. Said, then give your orders. He started off again on another tirade on the United Nations, world peace, harmony, this, that, and all. <laughs> Sardar Patel cut him short. Mm -hmm. He turned to Sam. He said, there, you have your orders. Move. <laughs> 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 this sums up this the personality of the Iron Man. Yeah. When if he see, was see, not around, take, he was somebody who was against 370, Sardar wasn't it? becoming the Prime Minister had long-term reper repercussions for the country. Hmm. Let us take the 65 war. Hmm. 65 war, of course, Pakistan had some advantage in uh, uh, Kashmir, you know. But then we were just inside Lahore, almost. Correct. I think the Raj regiment was only, I think, 12 or 13 kilometers away. First day, we had crossed and, the... And we, ex you know, uh, 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 Lalabhu Shastri was a great leader. Yeah. But then, not in the class of uh, Sardar Patel, you know. Mm. And he accepted ceasefire. And next day in Tashkent, he gave back. Mm. 71 war, when Mrs. Gandhi divided Pakistan into two parts. Huh? We thought that there is another Sadar Patel or Savarkar or Nirtaji Bose who is born, you know. But mm. then in the Shimla agreement, we turned all... It, 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 all it the proved wrong, you know. That, yeah. in, in Shimla agreement, we were holding 93,000 Pakistani soldiers as, as captive. Mm. Yet we could not take back POK. What, was that also? On the contrary. We had won three Hindu dominated uh, uh, tehsils in Sindh. Huh? We gave them back. And the, the, the Sindh Hindus who had helped us, some of them, they got so scared that it triggered a migration of one lakh Hindus from Sindh in the, after the Shimla agreement. Shimla agreement. So, I mean, it had long term reper repercussions. Repercussion. Yeah. Do, do you think the, the political narrative itself would have been different, Abhijit Majumdar, had Sardar Wallabhai Patel been not just president of the Congress party? First, he would have been president of the Indian National Congress. Then he would have been prime minister. Because the deal was whoever is elected the president of the Indian National Congress will become the. No, a lot of people say. Prime minister that this of the This is very country. hypothetical Wasn't because he died in 1950. Hmm. But he would have laid a foundation, you know. Foundation. That is what I want to say. And and somewhere we don't know how things would have turned. But I'm just saying the three years where he set the narrative for India in terms of the map and landmass, would he have also set the political narrative? Would he have changed what became perhaps the Nehruvian ethos to a different kind of politics that was followed? Would the Garam Dal would have been, you know, that kind of a perspective which, uh, which decided against India being secular? which said that India will be a sovereign democratic republic. I have the copy of the constitution, the original reprint. 
there is no secular no socialist there absolutely not it <coughs> there is there is ram there is buddh there is hanuman there is krishna in the directive principles and fundamental rights they are, that's the constitution which perhaps would have been championed by uh, sardar patel you know uh, obviously i mean after so much of constituent uh, assembly debates if they uh, if they did not find merit for words like socialist or secular there must be a reason uh, yeah there must be a damn good reason but most importantly anand if uh, sardar patel were to become the pm india's political culture of uh, for a long time it uh, continued of rewarding dynasty over over merit hmm. over this uh, entitled lutins class would probably uh, not have uh, crept in uh, over the decades and uh, i you know in my opinion it started i think uh, to uh, 1929 or 31 lahore uh, congress when you know the hmm. baton passed on from motilal to jawarlal hmm. of the uh, congress presidentship and that was because nehru felt so indebted to motilal uh, because he was bankrolling a fair bit of uh, hmm. uh, congress activity and uh, you know that's how the whole thing of dynasty over merit it you know nehru really di- was not supposed to be the first uh, pm of india hmm. in fact netaji shubhas chandra bose was uh, you know uh, uh, the first pm in exile a pm uh, in exile but i'm just saying would you have would we have had a scenario where we would have had a bose uh, and ambedkar uh, uh, nehru all part of the cabinet under the leadership of uh, patel. sardar patel and would the narrative have been different you know bakshi absolutely 180 degrees it would have been the other way you see a statesman founding statesman at that has to have vision nothing exemplifies absolutely. sardar patel's vision he alluded to that letter 14th november 1950 patel writes to nehru he says our security scenario is transformed tibet was a peaceful buffer today the chinese are sitting there we are in a two front scenario yeah. this is the prophetic words of sardar patel and he says with this we need to reconsider our military preparedness hmm. our army strength is going down you know we had a 2.5 million man army 25 lakh army reduced to 350000 divided between india and pakistan and when sir bob lockhart the first commander in chief of you know independent hmm. india's armed forces he you know put on his cap, pea cap and his uh, cane and he went to salute his new boss you know in the pmo he uh, he went to nehru with plans for modernization and expansion of the indian army and you know what nehru told him general we don't need an we, army we don't need an army <laughs> we are a nation of ahimsa non violence who the hell will invade yeah, us in- we in- only need the police who saved the indian armed forces patel you wouldn't have had armed forces had it been left to nehru man nehru. one single thing which you believe sardar patel would have done which perhaps would have had the long term uh, ramification 75 years when we stand up today had sardar be the pm one single aspect which stands out i think for uh, what he is known and uh, uh, you know under the uh, sobriquet that his statue stands unity hmm. you know india would have been a far more united uh nation with clarity on you know conceptual things like islamism without you know this uh, woolly uh, idealism blinding our uh, vision uh, etc and uh, you know we would have sorted out our relationship with the world a lot better if sardar were the pm instead of jawaharlal nehru nehru general bakshi you know, like i was saying what stands out is his statesmanship his realism his vision in that same letter that we were discussing 14th november 1950 you know what was one of the recommendation we need to improve the infrastructure in the himalayas right <laughs> you are doing it today today 75 years later 75 years later look at that the the the, the, the you know the very depth of his vision he had looked far ahead and he had said look you need to improve your infrastructure now had he been around it's just it is a tragedy that we lost him and do you know something in our constitution deftly 
imperial justice was replaced with social justice social justice and that's again no, because liberty okay. fraternity equality baad mein we give to ourselves social, social justice. justice so you know nehru was installed here as the prime minister through gandhi you know to carry on with that imperial justice tradition here is an anglo field guy eaton mm. harrow cambridge mm-hmm. educated family cut above oh they are not hindus they are not uh, indian you know mm. low down creatures of the empire white They're man elites. burden this is a family designed to rule the british left the empress left the emperor left now a new emperor of india a mm. new dynasty of india this is what would not have happened india's foreign policy would have been in place mm. security vision would have been in place internal problems internal problems like maoism your hindu muslim problem problem of bahavism ultra bahavism would not won't have been there and i think i am convinced that had sardar patel become the prime minister he would have india would have become a superpower today hmm. and and would have been close to becoming a vishu guru also so we would have already lived through our amrit kal and we would have reached to that end point where we I, have I set the so. road map now I think so. for the next Because 25 years in the last 8 years the kind of work which has been done hmm. now when the prime minister says that india where will india stand in 2047 i believe it hmm. so we wasted 60 years what Correct. what what has uh, instilled hope in us it's just work of 8 years so there there are so many aspects had this happened this could have happened but with this one man sardar wallabhai patel you want to keep going back and saying is this man's vision had we had just even 3 or 4 of year 4 years and you never know had he been the prime minister he may have lived longer he may have continued we never know but right now what could have happened is sometimes a, a, a good way to remember this man who stands for unity and that is sardar wala bhai patel to all my guests thank you very much for bringing us perspective always a pleasure speaking thank you thank you so much